before and after. Something a bit different. I'm making stuff again. I know, I know. It was only a matter of time. Um, it's the middle of winter, but I have to do something. So this is the door trim from my athlete. And this is going to be a pod. So essentially, this is a little base for it. Um, as you can see, sits in there really nicely. What I've got is heaps and heaps of infinity speaker grills. Because um, I'm doing dual drivers in the front. So we'll have one there. And one there, I don't know why I grab both, but we'll have one there, one there. And then some other cool things, you can see this line here, cut this all out, maybe a big infinity mirror here, not too sure, but I'll show you how I got to this point, um, and obviously further, but this is what I'm doing, this is what I'll probably be doing this weekend. So I was like, I may as well film it, I may as well film something that I'm actually doing again for once. So other door trim is off, um, essentially, first things first, clean all the shit off this, because this will be super slippery because of all the mad coatings I've put on it um, and then get masking tape, tape everything up, start making my marks and I'll be back in a sec. When I cleaned it, I literally just drowned it in brake cleaner. I'll probably have to go again because trust me, getting anything to stick to this is impossible. Um, but I basically got to just get my masking tape, um, mask up as nice as I can um, everywhere I'm going to do and obviously a little bit more. I did get a little bit of resin on the other side on my mad new trimmed bits, um, but it didn't really show, so it's not the end of the world. But like I said, I'm going to mask everything up fully so that I'm not going to, I don't know, have any leakages or ruin the door card where it's not going to be covered by this. And then mark my line, which is going to be a little bit under here like that, radius down here, follow this round and then come back up like that so I can have a cool little few, few little steps in it and stuff like that. Essentially, this is the hardest part. Um, I kind of already know what I need to do, so... That makes my life a lot easier, but actually designing this and doing all that sort of shit is the hardest part. So this is my line, I guess, from the um, the little armrest handle thing. It's a little bit lower than that, but I'll draw that on anyway. And initially I came up to here, and then this line here is where the, um, how you call it? That's where the side of the dash is basically. So essentially I know where I'd eat my marks to be, that's not sitting as flat as I would like, which is a bit annoying. But either way, you basically just want to make your line super nice. This is going to transfer over to the fiberglass. So you can cut this out um, using this mark. But obviously it's just a guideline. Like my other side is closer. I did spend a bit more time doing it. So I just need to get this close. And then I know there and here, actually, sorry, I'll go in a little bit first. So I have my little bit of overhang and it was, I ended up sort of doing something a bit more like, sorry, it's a bit hard to film, a bit more like that. So I have a speaker speaker and then essentially I went from here and just drew a nice radius down to there like that. So that's essentially what I've got on this other door underneath here. You might just be able to see it if I pull this off, um, flip it over. A bit hard to tell, but I can see that mark enough that I I can, you know, I can sort of go back over it. Um, but essentially this, there, over here. So I'll just make it a little bit more similar. But essentially what I do now is make sure this is all as covered as I want it to be. I've got like two layers here, nice and flat, because if you get little edges like I've gotten here, you get resin seep under it and it'll just do damage. Like you can't really get resin off stuff efficiently, especially not a trim material like this. But essentially that's that. Um, for the pocket, I basically just taped it all up so it's not going in there. Um, so I still have some sort of structure and shape and this butts in nicely. Like I said, this isn't laying as flat, but there is ways around this. I just, as long as I make this nice, thick and rigid, um, I can work this out. This will be obviously screwed on from the back of the door cart after it's done. But anyway, I'll fiberglass this in a sec. Since I'm holding down the fort, what I'm gonna do is cut this out. Instead of trying to start something, I'm not gonna finish for, you know, probably an hour in case I have to serve someone. But um, yes, I'll cut this out. Marked, the trimmed it up, obviously. Um, marked a bit of a finer point where I wanna trim. 
I obviously fell a bit short here. I'm not sure what happened. I think maybe my mark might have just been a bit wrong. Yeah, so my mark initially was just a little bit wrong, which is not the end of the world. Um, look, obviously, this is all going to be getting cut out anyway. So really, pff, how much does it matter? Not a lot. Um, obviously, I just had a thought. Oh, I just had a th Not obviously. I just had a thought as well when I cut this through the infinity mirror. I'm not sure what I'm going to do to finish this again because I don't want to trim the whole door card, but... I'll come up with something. Um, anyway, um, like I said, I'll trim this down now to the shape I want a bit more. Um, it's laying flat so I can sit both grills on it. I just know that I need, you know, essentially both to fit there. Like, I think that's going to be pretty cool. Um, maybe a little bit angled or something like that, but it's a pretty cool shape. Um, if you squint your eyes and defocus real hard... <laughs> Essentially, what i got here is some pre-cut bits. I've got two of these and then heaps of small bits to lay around the edge to beef up the edge so when I pull the thing, it doesn't flex. Um, and now I'll mix up some resin. I won't be able to film this, obviously. Mix up some resin, wet this all down, and then we're going. Essentially, if you were curious, um, I think I've showed before, but basically, this is, this is fiberglassing. There's not lots to it. You basically wet the brush up. Obviously, there's a dry spot, say, just here. I don't need to do this bit, but I'll show you anyway. And then you just dab it on like this or like stipple it on a bit more like that. Um, you don't necessarily brush it. Like you'll start sort of pulling stuff away if you brush it. You, like there's time and a place, but like I said, seriously, this is the easiest way to do it. You just dabble it on um, and then say so you get your, your next bit or whatever. And I want to reinforce all the way around the edge. So I'll go there, hard edge over the top. Because when you have a hard edge, it's a lot harder to blend it when it's thick matte. And then you sort of work from the middle out, I reckon, is usually the way to go so you don't get too many air bubbles and stuff. Um, there's different ways of doing it. You can go from one side to the other, but, like, seriously, it's pretty basic. Obviously, rolling it is another thing after this. That's mostly for moulds and stuff like that, though. But um, you'll see what I mean when I get to the end here. By having that torn edge, essentially, that'll sort of just break down the binder in the fiberglass and sort of dissolve it. And my rule of thumb here, what I'm going to do is essentially go until when it's fully saturated, it's pretty opaque. Like you can't actually see that text to mark through it sort of thing. So basically I'll go around the whole thing with one more layer like this. And then just again in some spots that I know are going to be pulled tight, which will make sense in a little bit sort of thing. At this point, essentially I've got most of what I want covered. Um, you can see it's a lot less transparent. There's a couple more spots like here maybe... Um, and just up here where I know it's going to be stretched heaps. Um, I'll get a little bit more on there, but that's mostly it. It's been like 30 minutes so far. This is after the sort of final trim. I think that shape's real cool. Smooth the edge over a bit. Um, yeah, so the other shit's going off. Tomorrow I will make some rings um, and then explain as I go, because if I explain this before I do it, it's going to make zero sense to most people, but um, pretty good so far. Fits pretty good up here. I can um, take up a bit of this pretty easily with some filler right at the end but so far so good like magic this one is all off and they can pop it off the door all the tapes pulled off the back um you can see there we are we're up to speed now um and where we left off so i won't film trimming this one and some other shit but i'll continue once i make these rings now i've got both of these pretty well close to each other um i'll hold them up side by side they're pretty good I mean, so that's pretty well as close as visually I can get them by eye. Um, and there's not really any way to measure this shit either, but basically I've made my rings. Um, I'll bring them up and then I'll start attaching all of those to this and show you what I'm gonna do there. Essentially what I'm doing here is I've got heaps of, I've got the two rings, so for each side obviously. And then I've got heaps of little sticks, whatever, hot glue. I'm basically just stacking them up, gluing them in a position that looks about right. So obviously this is in the door. They both sort of angle that way a little bit or a little bit different that way but you know about the same angle upwards there here just kind of what looks good and like knowing what's going to be able to stretch with the material which again will make more sense when i stretch it but you obviously have to be able to get some sort of shape to it otherwise it doesn't work so i've got to support this one more because it's obviously super unsupported this one's pretty good i'll get some more glue on it sort of thing um but you know, so far so good. Then I just got to copy it exactly on the other side. It's glued on now. This is obviously going to be like the hardest part is getting them as close as possible. These are, I think, pretty close. I fucked around with them for a while. Um, the shape of the mold's not perfect on 
this side, I think. I still need to, yeah, I think you can see, I still just need to trim a little bit more off the top there and just a hair more down there. But other than that, like that's pretty, pretty even, I think. So obviously getting as close as possible is the best thing to do. Um, when you're in the car, you'd obviously be sitting like this. So you sort of have leg room still because um, I don't want them to poke out too far. Next step is this sheet, which is tracksuit material. Um, and I will take that downstairs and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with it. My tracksuit material, which is just like, literally like tracky pant fucking fleece, um, cut it into two bits and I've got my two pods. And essentially what you do is you stretch this all over to start getting a bit of a shape out of shit. Um, I won't be able to film this, but I'll um, keep stretching it. And you basically just hot glue the backside to pull it into the shape you want. Essentially cut down to just bigger than I need, because obviously you want to make sure you have enough to pull and stretch on. Um, but you can kind of already see how this is going to go. Um, it's just about where you stretch it and where you sort of pull the tension and shit and um, getting it even on both, obviously. So basically what I'll do is I'll hot glue probably the whole top side first, um, and then I'll start working in the stretch, especially between these two speaker rings um, to get a nice shape. Here's the first one all stretched up. Um, I'll have to put a couple of staples in here just to get it flat because this is the outside OD of like the ring. Um, but where are we? Okay. Essentially, there, there, and um, I'll trim it back off. Obviously it's not sitting flush because there's heaps of bulk on the back now, but look at that versus the, the factory thing. Obviously, um, I'm gonna copy this stretch, um, like, you know, how tight it is here. You can kind of see how much tension there is on stuff. Um, the reason this was also so thick when I made it was because as soon as you resin this, it'll wanna shrink and lift the edges up to the thing. So thicker base essentially minimizes that. But, um, you know, I basically just gotta copy this over there best I can. It's, it's never gonna be exactly the same, but I should be able to get it pretty close. Um, but yeah, this probably makes a lot more sense as to what I'm sort of getting at now. So I will do that. They're both stretched. I'm pretty happy with that. This one, obviously I pulled a little bit tighter down here, but I can probably match this one and just do that. But I've got to staple them down. But other than that, they're all pretty, pretty similar, which is good. These are pretty good. I'm pretty happy with these. Essentially what I'm gonna do now is mix up some resin, um, get a couple gloves on. I've got one more brush and um, soak these i'll film a bit of it so you get what i mean sort of thing uh, it's probably a bit hard to follow this without filming what i'm doing but like i'm with a bit of common sense i'm sure you can work out what i've done here you glue a little bit stretch it glue the other side and you sort of just work around with bits of glue till it's all glued on the back side um, obviously you don't want it on the front because then it won't soak with resin but because this is obviously a porous material once i soak it you'll see it'll, it'll sort of take its form and then let it go off and i've got this shaped as like pretty self-explanatory but um you basically wet it up and then soak this like to the point where it's like it doesn't take any more resin um, ideally so it can be as like thick and dense as possible sort of thing so you have to use a bit of resin but um obviously because this is all sealed there's no holes in the back you leave these so it can still breathe otherwise the whole thing will inflate and it does inflate and i've seen it because i've done it before um which is not fun but essentially yeah get these as, as resin rich as sort of possible um and then you just sort of let them cure um, and then obviously the, the more solid they are, the less fiberglassing, if you wanted to, you'd need to do on the backside. For a sub box, you definitely have to do heaps of like fiberglassing on the backside to reinforce it, because this is not super strong, but for a speaker pod, essentially it's gonna be free air. Like I'm just gonna cut through the door cards. It's not gonna worry it really sort of thing. So I won't have to do much. And it's pretty complex. So it's gonna be a relatively strong shape sort of thing. So pretty much it and then i just gotta let these dry and have some food and they just probably smoke heaps of cigarettes while they're drying for the shit to dry upstairs because it's taken a while to dry i'm gonna install this mad lighting kit um i'm gonna move this one and then do the other door but basically just like off aliexpress with like 60 bucks but it's actually pretty cool so um, i worked out i can get more of these strips and hook them up to each door box so i can do more with it but um I'll keep going with this while i wait after heaps of mucking around um i like hit it with a torch and stuff sort of thing it's not perfect anymore, but like this stuff's pretty tough. So like I said, for something that's 60 bucks on AliExpress, pretty happy with it. And I think this here will follow the dash obviously, but looks way more OEM slash nice than say, I originally tried to go there, then down there, or then I'd had it straight through there. And it just looked like I'd tacked it on. Whereas I think this looks a, a lot better and a lot more, I don't know, 
factory, but I reckon, yeah, I'll do something else down here too, maybe. They're mostly gone off now. Essentially, all you gotta do is clean the back up, um, cut the holes out, obviously. And heaps of sanding and shit. I got this one in time that I could just cut it all with a knife and get it really nice, but, um, because they were still not quite off. But this one is like rock hard now, so I won't be able to cut this out. Just gotta die grind it out and shit, but at least I got half of it done easily. Thing you do while you're doing it as well is bust this shit out of it sort of thing. So you, because they're just there to hold it initially sort of thing, but because the ring's resined in, you can fucking get them out pretty easily sort of thing. But I've got to cut this all out anyway, obviously. Next step, obviously, I mean, I don't know, I say obviously a lot, but I just assume it's obvious. Um, cut the backs out for the speakers. Um, this one was probably, uh, like, obviously had to because it was pretty much flat on it. Um, and then this one, I just needed to basically cut that section out because it was pretty deep, but I was like, I'll cut the whole ring out so it's not terrible. It doesn't look like I've chewed it up with my teeth. Um, maybe a couple spots, but then essentially what I'm going to do is make sure this fits really, really good. Um, clean it all up, get it to fit as close as I can, clean the edges, straighten them up on the, on the sander, um, and then basically take it down, get it to where I want it to sit on the door card, screw it in from the back so it's locked in, um, and then make my marks on the door card to cut through where I need to for the depth of the speakers i might actually get away with not doing any because this section uh, uh it's where the door pocket is which is coming off anyway um and then this section is where the factory speaker was so i can pull the factory speaker grill off rather than just mangle it um and they're laughing sort of thing and then obviously i just got to make my backside here to go down to the infinity mirror um and then make the infinity like it's getting close i've fucking decided on a final final design i think um I don't even need to fill this in. I'm just gonna like clean this edge up really nicely and trim this basically as it is, just in the normal black suede. Um, I reckon my mad lights, I wanted to do a second one, but I reckon I'll be doing it under here and then I can get me crossovers in here, um, do something real cool here. And I might even do this bit diamond stitch like this um, just to fill it in. I know the infinity, I want to do the infinity mirrors, but fuck, I'm sure this will be pretty cool anyway. I think it looks pretty impressive still, so. To make it a bit more intricate, <clears throat> basically making side panels here, make a little base for it to cover all up to here. Obviously I can trim under here and stuff as well. Um, and then that's gonna give it a nice thing here. And Jess was saying I can do another stretch, but like inverted for the crossovers to just give it way more depth and shit too sort of thing. So it shouldn't take too long to do, but I'll um, quickly fucking make four of these basically because I tested it. It's the same on both sides, which is cool. Um, and then base I'll just make two bases because essentially these are the same as well like fucking i might have to trim the top of hair on the other one but we're getting there like so fucking i've just made all this shit i basically need to stretch this um and then I, we we're just talking to the thing and i reckon i'll make the crossovers float like just a hair too and then put these little storage pocket light things under them too the way they work's real sick and then put tape on the top so it just shoots the light out to the sides um just so they're floating this is floating like it's just all crazy <laughs> but um essentially yeah i'll pull this out now and stretch some material over it in every sort of glue known to man and i can't feel man and i can't feel anything now because my fingertips are all fucked but basically thinner material stretch it over pick it up what i'm putting down basically lay this guy in the middle and push him down and then we get a bit more dimension to it all sort of thing so i can obviously tweak the stretch and stuff but that's gonna be sick. So I'll staple this guy through, um, get it nice and centered, and then soak this in resin again. Amelia oh. quite likes it. <laughs> um, so this is obviously sitting pretty high at the moment sort of thing, but look at that. Jesse was onto something there, so it didn't take that long. Um, it looks sick. So <laughs> there's just like so much going on. Um, but yeah, essentially what I'll do is I'll just raise these up like a washer height. After this is all soaked, obviously fill in the little gaps, you know, tape it all up and just fill up the gaps with a little bit of bulk once it's screwed down, um, straighten up all the nasty edges and stuff sort of thing, just so it fits really good. It does fit better than that, but it's sitting up. Um, and then essentially just quickly buzz it and fucking cover this in suede, cover that in probably suede as well. I don't think I'll do the diamond stitch. It'll probably be a little bit too much um, for this. Potentially, I'm not too sure. <laughs> have a look. I don't. If I add foam, it'll just probably beef it up way too much. So anyway, um, either way, obviously more lights under there once it's all locked in and lights under those and gonna be absolutely ridiculous it's a lot more delicate and it's hard to get a nicer finish on it sort of thing but as long as my stretch stayed about right um and it's as soaked as it can be which it is um there's always a little bit of body filler sort of work afterwards it won't stay super this won't be super stiff either so you've got to kind of stiffen it up and stuff sort of thing and just get it so it's sort of nice and stuff anyway but um 
it's pretty good so far. Like that's the last sort of piece of the puzzle. Well, my whole head for this whole video is probably not a, um, too annoying for anybody, but um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just clean it, I mean, for this side at least, just cleaning it all up sort of thing. Um, it's essentially a few more screws that's properly mounted. Um, like I said, once I do the filler, I'll just put filler on everything I need to, mask it all up so it's all super tight, fits super nice, and then a little bit trim, like, you know, like I've probably got one more solid day in both really like if i do another day like today like i got here at nine sort of thing and finish it um nine at the moment um i'll definitely sort of have it done so i'd say yeah probably i could probably get it done sort of this week ish which is pretty cool sort of thing so like lights and like fiddling around and fine tuning and stuff will be a little bit longer but essentially for all intents and purposes done this week but i'm gonna go home tonight now this video is pretty much just about the black car but blow parts came so Obviously, the snout, um, the idler pulley, I'd say the idler bracket was already here, but the idler pulley, um, and then the actual sort of pulleys. So, look at that. And two radiators as well. But very exciting. Looks very good. I reckon all the billet stuff, I'll leave billet and then blower will be white and the hat will be, I don't know. I said this video is interior, so that'll be next time. But. magic this is now off uh, um after that brief intermission i'll mow these sides off clean it up all nice um i'll have to do a little bit of filler this back side's pretty ugly and it's a little bit weak sort of thing but it's not going to matter but a little bit of filler just to smooth it all out and get it a bit nicer um and then we're well underway to finishing this one today just some careful grinding action to get the most of the shit off sort of thing um mow these staples off get the sides all nice i just caught myself on one so i didn't fully mow it off but that's gone now um We'll go test fit this, see where it needs a little bit of filler, um, make this little elevated section a little bit nicer, and then there's something else cool I'll show you. Obviously that fits fucking awesome now. I did make sure it was a little bit shy um, because the trim's gonna add a little bit to it rather than looking over the top bulky and stuff. Um, this should pretty much sit sort of kind of flatter now where it needs to be. I can test this on the door too to make sure it's not gonna be full bowed out and stuff so I get it about in the middle where I need to fill and obviously pull it in and stuff sort of thing. But basically this, um, obviously I'm gonna have the crossovers here. Jesse was saying you can essentially do hard lines for crossovers. And this, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is bronze manganese welding rod. Um, so I made heaps of these up. Uh, it's 88% copper. So I can't imagine for this short span is gonna be any worse than you know, say fucking pff, copper. Like it's just, it's literally gonna be like, not even this long. This is, I just made it extra long so I could get through the door card and stuff. But essentially, you know what I mean? Like I've got plenty through the back there and I've just got to have heaps. So, and have heaps of super carefully drilled holes and all that sort of thing, but should be kind of cool. Obviously you just can't touch them ever or anything like that. The tedious, essentially I've pretty eyeballed these. Um, so they're about the same. Um, and I've marked the same distance along the bottom because that's gonna be more visible than anything else. Um, and I've done my marks for the left crossover, all to the left side of the terminal, and for the right one, I'm gonna do them all to the right side of the terminal. So I've got all 12 hard lines coming out looking semi-even, so pretty cool. These are all screwed down where they're gonna live. I've drilled all the holes out, um, a bit oversized obviously for the crossover wires, the holes for the lights under the crossovers. This itself is screwed down. I haven't done screws at the top or anything yet. I'm just not gonna fully commit yet. Um, Hopefully this clears and stuff. I might need to fill this in so the speaker's not open, but what I need to do now, because I had a bit of a terrible thought last night, make sure this fits. I'm pretty sure it does. I did go inside my original marking, but I need to make sure I can put this on and close the door and it's gonna work and stuff sort of thing before I commit. Because if I add a grill to this and say it's in the dash, you know, what do you do? So at this point, I will definitely check this, but I think they're, I think it's looking pretty fucking cool already, so. Super lucky I checked this because if you see right up in there, that's just touching. Um, I can mark where that is and take a lot out of that. That's no issue at all. The bottom, I'm gonna sort of kind of clean up a bit as well anyway, um, but look, all things considered, pretty good. I got away pretty nicely from that one sort of thing, but like, look in the car, they're not even that offensive really. Like I can pull the door shut, I think, yeah. Like it's, I, I could honestly not do anything about it, but I will um, in good conscience. So I've got all the stuff I wanted. I've got the 
the armrest floating. I've got this floating. And fuck, once I hook these lights up and stuff, like I think that's pretty sick. The crossovers aren't even going to be super exposed. So the wires aren't going to be real detrimental to your existence. But like really, it doesn't really encroach on the compartment space any more than oh, maybe an inch. And there's plenty of room. Like I don't rest my leg out against there on this side, obviously. But fucking look at that. I, um, I know I'll get my texter make some marks. I can definitely have this one probably trimmed today. Um, the bottom bit, I might match this and do diamond stitching and then have it smooth where the crossovers are, but we'll see. I'm not 100% sure yet. I'll see how fancy I can get with a sewing machine, but or how much time I have, basically. But look at that. That's pretty wild. I'll throw a quick hand sand until my hands hurt. Um, I've got that spot definitely addressed. Knocked most of the highs off this, so it feels a lot better. Um, I didn't go overboard because I still need to bog up some of the edges to get the gaps tight. Um, but overall, I actually got this shape smoother and nicer because nothing worse than like a super wavy, nasty shape. And this suede's pretty thin, so I don't have a lot of wiggle room in that. It's not like sub carpet. But basically what I'll do now, take this downstairs, um, take the door card up underneath all the edges, bog all the way around the edges where I need to, sort of thing where it's real nasty. In here is a little bit sort of ugly, so I'll give it a quick skim in there. Hit it with the orbital, because that's all the nasty stuff with the coarse sandpaper that's done. Um, and then I can trim this. Like, seriously, that's pretty much it. So definitely gonna stick around till I get at least this trimmed. Um, and the speakers in, I guess, so. So as you can see, I basically was just leveling the um, gaps under the armrest and a little bit at the top here. It was pretty hard in there. But the trim's gonna take up a lot of this, so it's not the end of the world, but it was just a little bit gappy around here sort of thing. So I was like, I'll get it a bit better. Um, and I was like, I'll just fill in a bit of the stuff sort of thing too. So, And I was gonna try to remake this shape a little bit. So see how it goes. Bog's a lot stronger than you'd probably expect. So this is not anything terrible by any means. You'd be surprised at what stuff is done, what stuff is done with bog. But let this dry and then um, give that a quick buzz and it should be ready to trim, which is cool. Trick to this is um, obviously it's gotta be off, off, but this is still a little bit tacky, but what I can start doing, unscrew this, obviously unscrew the back, whatever's attached. So it's it's released, it's free. Um, and then essentially, cause the tape's not gonna stick to this very well anyway. It's just a matter of lifting it off with the tape, peeling the tape off and then sort of just shaping that edge. It's pretty clear um, where it needs to be shaped to. Once it's pulled off, like I'll show you all that sort of thing, but um, Yes, I'll give it. I'll give it a sec. I'll start unscrewing it, and by then it should be pretty much dry enough to sort of um, pull off. You can see because I was trying to squeeze it down in the gaps. That's essentially where I needed to fill most of it. Um, you can see it's not as much around anywhere else. Um, this bottom bit, you can see from the back. I kind of wanted to cover that little corner there a bit more, um, just to make it look a bit visually nicer. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like if you get creative and you have lines, you can go off. You can kind of just get a knife when it's at this stage and sort of carve a lot of it away. But um, like this is not, I don't really have a good reference for it on this sort of thing. So I will basically just let it go and just sort of sand it, make it a bit nicer sort of thing, smooth over the nasty stuff and um, yeah. So, um, cause I'm doing this in bl like black suede, I know it's pretty forgiving. Um, it's not quite like matte, that's probably better than matte black paint, but it hides a lot of stuff. So this finish for paint, obviously is not even fucking close, um, but generally if it feels pretty good, look, it's gonna be fine to trim in anything semi-thick. This is all pretty good. I've got a nice little radius all the way along it. Um, look, I'm not unhappy with it. Like you can't really even feel. So see what I mean? You can see that. Uh, I'll give that one more quick dust. But other than that, that's good sort of thing. So essentially what I do from here, break clean the whole thing, just let it dry um, and then cut my material and then trim it. So obviously before anything else, test fit it again. Make sure it is, it is good and it's what you're after. You know what I mean? So... Um, I know in here was my biggest thing. Look, once that, the trim is gonna take up a lot of that and you'll see what I mean in like a fucking second because I'm gonna clean this and trim this because I'm pretty pretty happy with that. Like as far as this goes, it's a good fit. Um, like I said, I'm still not 100% on this yet, but yeah, get some trim cut, get some glue on it and um, we're good. Trim, um, get my spray glue. The, like I said, car builder stuff is the best. I've said it before really really good so for this sort of stuff like we've tried all of them this is this is good so um yeah i'll get this all ready prepped get a little board for me to work on and slowly chip away at trimming this um the trick with this before i do it will be um the rings aren't as important because obviously the speaker's going to cover them so i cut them just in there i don't need to push them in or anything i'm um, finding the most complex spot so this is going to be a bit of a hard one 
but definitely this edge too. So I make sure I need to make sure I have enough slack for that. But getting the majority and the top and everything first is going to be most important. And then I'll work my way down probably because that's the bottom and the front of the door. So even though I want to get this perfect, which I probably can get it close, um, I still don't want, you know, if I get a wrinkle or two just down here, it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? So I bit off a little bit more than I could chew. I might have jinxed myself. This is that nasty corner radius thing that I knew I wasn't going to be able to get. I sort of cheated. I did a little cut in it. Um, but like I said, where this sits in the door, even when the door is wide open, you you can't really get in there. If you, if you look in there, you're an asshole. But um, basically, I'll sit this back on the door card wherever it is now and um, have a bit of a look. It should fit a bit loose at first. And then obviously, once I clamp it down, it'll be really snug. But check it out there you go and then obviously for up in there i'll um trim that as a separate bit i've just realized i need to probably seal the speaker in still um i can probably do something real ghetto to do that maybe but um either way i'll screw this back down and have a bit of a look so i quickly trimmed this i didn't do it in the other stuff um i'm just sitting the speakers in there i've kind of sat the lights where i want them as well so i'm going to power them up in a sec I've got the crossovers bolted down. Obviously, I haven't done the hard lines yet. I think I've got one of the lights under there that'll work, but um, you can sort of see that light just sort of sitting there at the moment. Um, but yeah, I really want to power this up and turn the lights off and just sort of see what it's actually going to look like. But so far, I think that's I think that's really cool. Like, I definitely don't think I needed to do the diamond stitch down the bottom. That's pretty impressive. But I think once these lights are on, seriously, it's going to be like ridiculous. So two secs. Here we go. <laughs> How cool is that? So I think the little lights under it aren't doing anything really, but that's pretty cool. It's not as like ex amazing as I was sort of expecting, but still pretty cool. skipped a few steps um but essentially obviously it was trimmed lights were on all that sort of thing all i've basically done is sold some wires into the speakers screwed them down um added a little bit of trim under here glued this light along under here obviously added the hard lines um i spent a little bit of time mucking around to try get a way to get light under them and i worked it out you're not gonna be able to see it but there's little bits of acrylic under there with this cool light strip stuff um and yeah i'm basically just sort of screwing it all together and then i could sort of start wiring it up and running wires through the door and stuff um and yes but it's obviously i still need to make tweeter pods and stuff like that but what i've done here is where the hard lines come through obviously i just trimmed them all off um i don't actually have a lot of room at all so i might even like get these soldered on as close as i can zip them but i'll have to put something on here just to make it safe but i'm pretty sure that's going to be right but i don't want to jinx myself so this will be a bit risky but what i'm going to do obviously join the wires up start wiring the crossovers and then test it out with all the lights in there cleaned up so essentially um all my wiring's done um all taped up nicely what i will do is put some sicker flex over these probably to insulate them um just give them a bit of a barrier between the door and the terminals obviously and that'll lock them in too so they won't wiggle around but this is pretty well permanent um runs up there nicely speaker wiring comes out here to that this box i haven't mounted yet because i'm getting new boxes i think might that might work with it um with more control and stuff but um essentially yeah that's kind of pretty much it i'll clean the front side off and test all these lights out before and after If you're still here, quick little bonus, um, tweeter pods as well. I'm not gonna film the whole thing of these. I'm already marked up one design that I was gonna do a grill in, but whatever. Um, this is the new design. They're different side to side. This one's got the daylight sensor in it as well. So I'll um, add this back in afterwards, but much the same, stretch the grill cloth over it, do yada yada, same thing, except these little tweeter things, they'll sit in there. These are just little PVC end caps. You get me? Easy as that. 
All right, I once again skipped a few steps, but it's the exact same process as what I did for the door card. So essentially we've got, oop, ass a bit, but left, right, obviously they're super asymmetrical. I didn't realize till I pulled this one out and held it next to this one, they're totally different widths, but this one has the daylight sensor in it, which was up here. You can see under there, I, um, I cut it out, glued it back in, filled over it, got it as close as it needs to be to trim, um, and essentially that's it. But look, realistically, the distance from the pillars is pretty similar on both of them. That's what I was after. Lined them all up next to each other. For all intents and purposes, they are you know, pretty pretty similar sort of thing. So basically, this is the last step. I just need to trim these. Obviously, still need to do the other door card, but whatever. Um, yeah, drill holes through the cups for the tweeters. The only thing I did differently here was these are PVC end caps, um, the little tweeter mounts. I think they're the surface mount ones. Um, they, or the flash mount rather, they just sit in there nicely. So essentially whatever mounts your tweeters have, it's as simple as that. Um, and then obviously I can attach them. However, drill a couple of holes for the wiring um, and then trim them. But these should even be super easy to trim because they're such a small piece and these fit awesome in the car. So I'll trim these quickly and then I'll show you how they fit. All right, for the sake of me hurting myself again um, and going mental, this is as good as it's going to get. So you probably can't even really tell on the video, but there is a few wrinkles here. However, the way this sits is up against the pillar and up against the windscreen pretty much. Like it's like that against the windscreen. So you can't see it. Again, I still did want to get it perfect. You can only do so much. I had a lot of goes at this. Um, I kind of worked out what I needed to do. I can probably trim it again if it lifts or it causes an issue, but essentially I think that's pretty neat. Like it's way neater than the grill that was there. That's what it'll look like from the outside, essentially. So the back's nice, and um, the bits you can see are good. This is just going to bug me a little bit, like I said. Um, but you're seriously not going to even notice that. But uh, I'll just trim the other side quickly. So here they are. This is the this is the mount I was talking about. Um, put it down somewhere. I don't need to... I'm going to wrap a little bit of tape around these, so they're pretty snug in there. But I can just twist them. And then these tweeter mounts that come with them, are adjustable up and down so i kind of have aiming not that i need it really um but it's just kind of like a cool nice little thing and these tweeters are tiny so any sort of extra bulk around them helps there you go you can see the wrinkles a little bit better but we'll get this in the car and prepare to be amazed there you go i know you might not be as amazed as i am um i think that's pretty cool though like looks right match with the the pillars um obviously you can't really see it through the windscreen because it's still tinted at the moment um but there you go i'll oh, just get a better angle yeah because it's all black you're not going to be able to see anything but i think that's pretty cool it'll be loud too <laughs> rather than firing at the windscreen but just do the other side and um and hook them up and i think it's pretty cool yeah. anyway thank you for watching again I know it's not weekly posts anymore, but I'll just post, I was gonna say fortnightly, but it's gonna be like once a month. It's just gonna be whenever I have something interesting to post, I've decided because most of the time it's not that interesting. So anyway, see ya.